Hey guys, this is Kyle from Envision, and today we're going to be talking about custom functions in Power Query in the M language. So this video is meant for people who are already familiar with Power Query. They've been using it in Excel or Power BI for a while now, and they want to level up their skills to start building their own functions to get more done in less steps. So we're going to touch on what custom functions are, how to create them, and once you've created it, how to call on that function in a few different ways to build that logic into your query. Let's get started. All right, so before we get too much into the weeds on the Power Query, we're going to take a quick look at the sample data set that we've built out here. I've kept things very, very simple. So we've got a column of side IDs, groupings, expiration dates, and a count of items inside of each one of those groupings and expiration dates. So very basic inventory management type of data set. And to the right here, you can see what we've got as our end product, which should look pretty familiar to you. All we've really done here is combined our grouping and expiration into one column and then pivoted that data set to get what we have over here. You might be thinking, oh, hey, that's something I already know how to do. That's something that we can do with a basic Excel pivot table. And you're absolutely right. But today, we're going to be using that as our sample to have something that's already familiar to you. But we're actually going to reverse engineer the process of pivoting this data in a way that will show you how to create custom functions. So I'm going to go to our data ribbon and pop into Power Query over here. So as I mentioned, that's something that could be done very simply in a Excel pivot table or even inside of Power Query. We have the native command of table.pivot, which will allow you to get the exact same output as what we're going for. But let's take a look at our sample query and show an overview of what we're going to be building out today. So as you can see here, we pulled in our source data, assigned data types, and then in order to recreate the process of pivoting data, we grouped our rows by site ID. So each one of these tables shows all of the rows of our source data table that correspond with that site ID. And then we've got this custom one step here, which in that custom step, I've called on a custom function that we created. And that took all of these individual tables. It uses that table as an input and then shapes that data into what we want the pivoted data set to look like. So you can see here that our column headers of each one of those individual tables are now equal to the items that will be in that pivoted list. So if we look at the custom function here, the first thing you want to notice is that we actually have a separate icon in our queries pane for custom function. It very clearly shows it for us as a function icon rather than a table icon. So if we look in the advanced editor, the advanced editor is something that at this point you're likely already pretty familiar with. If not, the advanced editor shows you everything that your query is doing, all of the M code that is written into that query in one view instead of relying upon the formula bar up here. So inside our advanced editor, we can see that this looks pretty standard. It looks very similar to what you'd see in the advanced editor for a query, but we have a key difference in this section up at the top here that actually specifies this as a function rather than a query or a table query. So. Before we dig into that too much, I'll show you how I actually created this custom function and then how we're going to call upon it. So as far as what custom functions are, we can see very clearly that they are a function that we're able to call on just like anything that was created inside of the native functions in Power Query, but it combines a series of steps as we saw in the advanced editor here into a single step that can all be called on in one go. And that function can also be used across multiple queries. So let's go ahead and start working on building out that custom function. I've pulled in our source of data here and assigned data types. And the first step that we're going to do, as it should be familiar with the concept of pivoting data, is I'm going to group these rows together. So I'm just going to go to transform in the ribbon group by, and we're going to group this by our site ID. 
in the group by dialog that appears. One thing that's very important is that under our grouping operation, we want to make sure that we're selecting all rows because we don't actually want to summarize the data right now. We just want to break that all into individual tables so that each site ID has all of its source data still associated with it. So I'm going to click OK here, and you can see that we now have a column full of tables. And each one of these tables you can individually drill into or view the preview in our preview pane below. And you'll see that the structure has remained the same. We have our site, grouping, expiration, and count. So what we're going to do in order to create a custom function is we're actually going to start with one of these tables as our sample, do all the transformations that we want to do on that sample table, and then pull the M code that was created by everything we did on the user interface from those transformations and create our function from that. This is a way that allows you to create custom functions without having to know too much about the M language itself. Of course, I recommend getting to know the M language and using the formula bar up here is a great way to do that, but we want to make sure that custom functions are accessible to everyone, even if they haven't done that deep dive through the official documentation yet. So I'm going to right click on one of our tables here that we're going to use as a sample and drill down so I'm looking at only that individual table. And now we're going to start to actually pivot this one individual table. In order to do that, what we're going to do is another group by function in order to combine anywhere that our grouping and expiry remains the same and get summarized numbers over here. So first thing I'm going to do is just merge these two columns together. Once again, this isn't using any custom M code yet. I'm just right clicking these columns and selecting merge columns. And I'm going to separate these by a underscore to make it easy for us to read. And now that we've merged those columns together, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this site ID column because we're not going to need that at the end of the day. If you remember where we were earlier in the process, after grouping the rows, our site IDs are already in there. So I don't need that site ID to also be inside of our finished table over here. So now that we've removed that site ID column, we need to shape this data so that our groupings are shown as column headers rather than as row headers. If we look back to our sample query, we can see that in the original tables, everything looks exactly like the source. And after our function, we want to make sure that data is pivoted so that our groupings are column headers. So in order to do that, since we only have a two column table here, I'm going to do a very simple transpose. So in transform on the ribbon up here, I'm going to select transpose and then promote our headers. So under home, use first row as headers to get this to look like what we want our pivoted table to look like. An important note is that often when we promote headers, it creates an additional step right after that of changing type. And this change type step if we look up at the formula bar here, actually has those column headers hard coded into it, which we don't want right now. So I'm going to remove the auto generated step of change type. And now if we look at our applied steps, everything that is after this step 9000, where we drilled into an individual table, we want to perform those exact same steps on every single one of the tables that we have in our column here after grouping. So what we're going to do is simply open up our advanced editor. And inside the advanced editor, I'm going to take all of those steps after the step named 9000. And I'm going to copy those to the clipboard, close out of the advanced editor, and create a new blank query. This blank query gives us a blank canvas to work upon. And this is where we're going to actually be creating our custom function. So inside this blank query, I'm going to open up the advanced editor and paste in all of those steps that I just copied. So right now, when you're looking at this, you're probably thinking that this looks exactly like our original query did. 
It all has the very same structure inside of the advanced editor, and you're absolutely correct. One thing to know about the M language is if everything in your applied steps is done sequentially, which it will be by default if you're using the user interface rather than writing any custom M, is that every step references the name of the step previous to it. So in our promoted headers step here, you can see that we're promoting headers of transpose table, which is the name of the step right before it. In transpose table, we're transposing the table called removed columns, which is the name of the step right before that. And using that same logic, if we go back up to our very first step here, merge columns, right now, that references the step 9000, which doesn't exist inside the query that we're working on here. Knowing that key, that every step references another step, is what we need in order to actually create a custom function. So I'm going to add some empty space above our let statement. And up here is where we're going to define that this is a function rather than a query of its own. And we're going to list out the inputs to that function. So if you've worked with other languages in the past, you're probably fairly familiar with an arrow operator. So that's going to be just an equal sign followed by a greater than sign, which looks just like a fat arrow in the typing area. And inside M, that arrow operator or the arrow function is used to define functions. So everything before the arrow is going to be the inputs to our function. Everything after the arrow is going to be the result set or the steps of what is done to those inputs. So I'm going to add some open and close parentheses right before our arrow function. And we can see already that no syntax errors are being detected in the advanced editor, which is always a good sign. We don't want to be picking up errors. And inside these parentheses are where I'm going to list the actual inputs that I have. As with most languages, whenever we have an input, we need to name our input. So I'm going to name it source table. And we need to define what type that input is. So that's going to be source table as table. If you're creating a custom function that uses a date input, a number input, so on and so forth, that can be done as well just by modifying your input string here. So now that we have source table as a table, that can be used to replace where we were previously referencing the step 9000. So I'll just highlight that whole area here in the query and replace that with source table. You can see that the IntelliSense is already picking up that input that I named earlier. So I can even just click on that, and it'll fill it in the rest of the way for me. We can see that no syntax errors have been detected. Go ahead and click on Done here. And a couple of things are going to happen right away for us. First off, we'll notice in the Queries pane here on the left-hand side that it recognizes us as a function rather than a table, as shown by the icon there. Our formula bar shows the entirety of the function that we've created, and it has a spot here where you can enter a parameter to actually test and invoke your function. Since our source table is actually contained inside of our demo area, I'm going to go over to the demo area and show you now that we've created a custom function, how we actually call on that custom function. So if you just want to use the user interface, the easiest way to do that is if we get to the last step in our demo area before we drilled into an individual table, that's going to be our group rows. So I'm just going to delete everything after that to bring us back to the point of the query where we want to be. And we can also see another way to call on our custom function is inside of a custom column or anywhere that we can write M code, where I'll just show you quickly that the IntelliSense that we created picks up query one, which was the name of our function query, is now listed as a function in the M language. So if I wanted to add a column that calls on our function query using that count column as our input, I could say query1, open up our parentheses, and name our input right inside of that. Additionally, if we hover over query1, as you saw a second ago, it'll actually show us that full query right in the IntelliSense built into the Power Query language. So I'll name count as our input right here. Click OK. And this now looks exactly the same as it did 
when we invoke the custom function from the user interface. So the functions that we create inside Tire Query are treated exactly the same as any other function would be treated, where it truly is now a part of the M language within whatever file you are working on. Once we've done that, I'll remove the original column so that we now only have a column of tables that are created after the fact of the custom function that we created. And we can now expand that out in order to get our pivoted table. As another little bonus here, if you look at the options that showed up on the user interface when we go to expand, you'll see that right now we're hard coding those column names, which obviously is not what we want to do. We want to be able to create a function that is going to be dynamic so that however many groupings exist inside your data set, everything is going to be pulled over properly. So if we pop over to our original sample query, I'll show you a little bit of M that I wrote that will allow us to expand these columns without hard coding the column names for us. If we get, pop back over to our sample query here, you'll see this step that I named expansion, where I just took the M code that was automatically generated by expanding our table column and just modified the final parameter in that in order to be a little bit more dynamic. This chunk of M code will be in the description of the video as well. If you want to use this on your own, just make sure that you replace the reference to the column count right here with the name of whatever column your tables are located in that you're going to be expanding. But as you see, once we expand things out, it looks exactly like the pivot that we wanted and uses that custom function that we created. If you like this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, Transform Everything. We're planning to pop out a lot more content similar to this to help you level up your skills. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to list those below and we'd be happy to engage with you on that. Thanks for watching the video again and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one.